Remember, a, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. I'm showing you this uh, picture of a brain for uh, two reasons. Not only because I understand you might have lost yours for how bored you might be, but um, also we're going we're gonna to talk about neurons, which are the cells that conduct electrical impulses and thoughts and memories um, uh, in just a moment. Uh, this all has to do with active transport. Active transport is the movement of something, in this case maybe a solute or an ion, uh, against its concentration gradient, meaning it's going from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration. And in, we see an example here. There are these um, square, whatever they are, solutes on one side of the cell, and the cell is actually using uh, one of its membrane proteins in the presence of energy to move these guys from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration. This is against what nature wants, um, just naturally, without energy. So this takes time and energy to do. Uh, but it's a big process that uh, exists within the, the uh, bodies of organisms. Make sure that you um, Look for the terms electrochemical gradient while you're reading, and look for two forces that combine to produce this gradient. Um, you're also going to see electrogenic pumps, two, two examples of that, and then something called co-transport. This is 7.4. In this case, the cell uses transport proteins, which need a boost from an energy molecule. This actually changes the shape of the proteins, causing them to pump different molecules and ions across the membrane now from the side with fewer solutes to the side with more. So that's an example of active transport there. Um, you can see we've, we've talked about uh, diffusion, osmosis, and um, facilitated diffusion. We'll talk about that, that in class. Uh, these do not take any energy. These are passive, and uh, here's active over here on the right-hand side. This is important because it allows cells to maintain concentration, concentration gradients that are kind of abnormal or unnatural. And that's, I'll give you a few examples where that's important. Well, the first one is this, the sodium-potassium pump. And it has to do with neurons talking to one another. Um, about a third of all the energy in our body, 10% of all of the oxygen that you uh, inhale, it goes to maintain this unequal, unnatural gradient of sodium and potassium ions so that our neurons are able to conduct impulses, not only in our brains, but to our hands, to our feet, and, and digestion, and heartbeat, and all the things that happen within our body. This is a type of active transport system, and um, it's a little confusing. We're going to go through the, the steps here, but let me show you the big picture. The big picture is that um, there's going to be three molecules of sodium within a neuron, uh, and it's going to be pumped against its concentration gradient in the presence of ATP to the outside of a nervous tissue cell or a neuron. Likewise, potassium ions, these K pluses, are going to come in and they're going to be pumped in uh, as well. Um, ATP is used in this process, and the very first step is that cytoplasmic sodium, three of them, bind to the sodium potassium pump. It's just a, a protein that exists in the membrane of all neurons. This then stimulates a uh, phosphorylation of ATP to become ADP, but some energy is released there. And then you can see that the sodium ions leave and go outside of the cell. As a result, on the other side of the protein, there's some notches here that would fit potassium ions. Those guys, uh, two of them specifically, are going to be grabbed onto by the cell and brought to the inside of the cell membrane. And um, then the loss of the phosphate restores the protein's original shape. You can see those guys come on in there. Uh, the potassium is released, and the, the cycle is then going to repeat itself. Now, you can rewind this section of this video or you can uh, bear with me, I'm going to show you a couple of short little videos to try and help you uh, understand this. The sodium-potassium exchange pump is an example of an active transport process. Active transport processes can move substances against a concentration gradient, and they require energy expenditure in the form of the breakdown of ATP.
the sodium-potassium exchange pump moves sodium ions out of the cell and potassium ions into the cell. The carrier protein for sodium-potassium exchange is embedded in the cell membrane. Three sodium ions and an ATP molecule can bind to the carrier protein on the inside of the cell membrane. The ATP is broken down to ADP and phosphate. Simultaneously, the carrier protein changes shape and the sodium ions are transported across the membrane and released on the outside. In its new conformation, the carrier protein can now bind potassium ions on the outside of the cell. Two potassium ions move into the carrier protein from the outside of the cell membrane and the phosphate attached to the carrier protein is released. The carrier protein changes shape again reverting to its original conformation and delivering the potassium ions across the membrane to the inside of the cell. It is now ready to repeat the process of sodium-potassium exchange. And here's another example. The sodium-potassium pump is an active transport mechanism. Three sodium ions bind to the protein channel and an ATP provides the energy to change the shape of the channel that in turn drives the ions through the channel. One phosphate group from the ATP remains bound with the channel. The sodium ions are released on the other side of the membrane outside of the cell and the new shape of the channel has a high affinity for potassium ions and two of these ions now bind to the channel. This binding again causes a change in the shape of the protein channel and this co conformational change releases the phosphate group on the cytoplasm side. This release allows the channel to revert to its original shape and as a result the potassium ions are released inside the cell. In its original shape the channel has a high affinity for sodium ions and when these ions bind again they initiate another cycle. The important characteristic of this pump is that both sodium and potassium ions are moving from areas of low concentration to areas of high concentration. In other words, each ion is moving against its concentration gradient. This type of movement can only be achieved by the constant expenditure of ATP energy.